DMAA is the government's new way in which they have decided that they want to regulate. They send out warning letters. The general public thinks a warning letter, which I would have thought so two years ago, was the FDA's official position. Ultimately, when high tech has sued the FDA in DMAA's litigation over them acting arbitrary and capricious in the way in which they were treating DMAA, the government basically said, no, that's not our position. You shouldn't be able to sue us because a warning letter is not final agency action. Ultimately, a federal judge in Atlanta has ruled that it is, along with some of the other things they did, final agency action, and we've been fighting them for two, a better part of two years now, and it'll probably last another year and a half until we see who wins, loses, or draws. And as to uh, the reason that we fight for DMAA is if they take a product like DMAA that is safe, it's effective, it works, and we don't stand up for it, you know, then we would compromise what is in our products, make a less effective diet pill, less effective energy aid, and then we'd also compromise our morals. And in our particular case, we have built our company based upon standing up for what's right and wrong. And in this case, uh, even when everybody else runs for the hills, we have stayed and fought the good fight. As to DMAA, you know, we will continue to fight for it, but when we hired experts here recently in DMAA's litigation, uh, it came out that in the FDA's database there are what they call adverse event reports, AERs for short. And in the AERs, there were more people who filed a complaint that a product gave them a headache, nauseousness, and different things with a vitamin C product or a multivitamin than did DMAA. We sold approximately 250 million doses of DMAA without a single serious adverse event. You know, the amount was over five times that with vitamin C and AERs or adverse events, meaning that when people took something that should have no adverse events that the placebo effect kind of kicks in where people just assume there's a cause and effect with the product in which they take. In the small company's uh, case, the attorney would advise you to throw in the towel and just call it a day. In the large company's case, the attorney would advise you that the stakes are too high don't roll the dice because if you lose, it's too much money. High tech is kind of in that perfect storm, if you will, in that we are a good sized company. We're privately owned, not a publicly traded company. I get to make the call if I'm gonna roll the dice or not. And ultimately, you know, my decision was to roll the dice on $40 million and ultimately, you know, we were successful. Had we lost, I would have owed the government $40 million. There's not a lot of good case law. Our industry is only 22 years old, so there's not a lot of law that would tell you what is right, what is wrong. So high tech is kind of blazing a trail as to you know, what is legal, what is not legal, things of that nature. And if you went back to the early 1900s, if Coca-Cola had not done that, then caffeine would still be illegal.